Hello and welcome to Witch Talk. I'm Jamie Della, the author of the Book of Spells, The Magic of Witchcraft, and we're here today to talk about the different gods and goddesses that are part of the pantheons that pagans, witches, Wiccans, we all celebrate and begin to recognize. And one of the important things to remember is that these gods and goddesses are different aspects of the one divinity. They are personalities and characteristics to help us understand the great mystery. So before we begin, let's welcome in the four directions. I welcome in the direction of the east, the element of air, and new beginnings. I welcome in the direction of the south, and fire, and spark. I welcome in the direction of the west, the element of water, and emotions, and feelings. And I welcome in the direction of the north, the element of earth, being grounded, and your ancestors manifesting. Now, one of the most exciting and sometimes frustrating aspects of being a witch is that we are our own best teacher. So sometimes you'll see in a book where someone will say the color yellow represents spring and someone else will say it represents air and sometimes it represents courage and sometimes it switches around. So the point is you need to look at all the stones and when you pick up um, rose quartz, does it make you feel love? When you pick up adventurine, does it make you feel courageous? When you pick up a clear quartz, are you able to signify what your desires are and then shoot that up with the clarity of a quartz? Or do you use something else? The herbs are the same way. Some people like lavender for calming. Some people prefer hops. Some people prefer valerian. Some people prefer chamomile. These are all the different ways that we can tap into the divine. Now, one of the ways that I um, explain the gods and goddesses is by backtracking just a little bit to the religion that I was raised in, which is Christian science. And when people go, wait a minute, is that the one um, that Tom, uh, what's his name? What is it? What is it? What? No, 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 no. It's not religion of science. It's not science of mine. Christian science was founded by a woman named Mary Baker Eddy. And she believed that when Christ said that you will heal you will do these works and more that he meant it and that the whole aspect of the whole way to heal or to manifest was with a purity of thought with it with a pure mind of focus and we know that now don't we we know that what we put out into the world we often end up getting that thought that we say to ourselves over and over and over again that vision that we hold over and over again that wish that we light a candle to that our purity of thought is what creates healing and it's what manifests our desires a way that um, the God, Father, Mother, God was explained within Christian science was through seven synonyms. The seven synonyms are principle, mind, soul, spirit, life, truth, and love. So these are the different aspects of the divine, the different aspects of a Father, Mother, God. We have principle, we have order, we have mind, we have intelligence, we have soul, we have this everlasting aspect of ourselves that continues to go forward and through time forward and backwards and even soul families. We have spirit. That is our personality. That is our unique way that we're showing up in the world, our individuality, our singularity, our uniqueness. Then we have life, which is, of course, the life that exists here and the animism that's out in the world, the world that is speaking to us all the time that we are connected to. And then we have truth, truth with a capital T, the truth that um, supersedes all the individual truths, the myopic perspective, but having that broader perspective is if we were all just facets of one great diamond and the truth was the entire diamond itself. Love. Love is all in all. When you have love, you can move mountains, right? So these different aspects, these seven synonyms, these seven different ways to explain and understand the divine is very similar to me, my understanding of the gods and goddesses. So I'm going to go through, these are the gods and goddesses that I work with most. Now in my book, I recommend several different gods and goddesses and they are, um, uh, categories within our eight pagan sabbats, which I explained the sabbats in an earlier um, video, which I hope you saw and loved. So in any case, I prefer to have a relationship with gods and goddesses before I ask them to help me with my spell work. I don't think it's very fair to just call on um, 
an aspect of the divine, if you haven't even sat with it for a moment, just try to come to understand what that God and goddess represents to you, to you specifically. So for me specifically, Kuan Yin represents compassion. A lot of people know she represents compassion. She has a vessel where she catches all the tears of humanity, but she's also a goddess who understands boundaries personal boundaries. We can have what's called compassion fatigue, where we're in the world helping others and we're taking on too much pain. So she helps remind us that there are boundaries. There is a point when you need to stop and nurture yourself. She's also a goddess who represents uh, impossible solutions, illimitable choices. And that's what I love. We have compassion, boundaries, choices, and solutions. That's what Kuan Yin represents for me. And then we have Apollo. Apollo is a god that um, I got this statue when my son Kobe was at Waldorf School in Pentathlon and they had to compete as in the Olympics uh, with the five original sports. And it, at their school, they wrote a dedication to different gods and goddesses to say, I'm dedicating my games to you. And Kobe chose Apollo, a god of music, a god of art, a god of grace and beauty and strength. Here he is riding a swan. And that's my Kobe. He, he glides through this world with such beauty and such style and such um, finesse. And that is Apollo. 11 years later, he's still Apollo. And then we have Hera. My friend Christy brought that back from Greece. And what I love about Hera, she's a mother goddess. And she helps remind me to be at home and to be still because I can get a little hyper sometimes to tell you the truth. And Hera reminds me to take care of my hearth, to make sure my home is good, to protect my sanctuary. She's a very powerful goddess as a mother. And what I love about her is one of her symbols is the peacock. And if you think of that broad expanse of peacock feathers, each one has a single dot. And those are her eyes looking out for me, protecting me, making sure I'm okay, looking around for me for possible solutions for our home and hearth. Um, and then I have Aphrodite. And Aphrodite I got um, right before to shoot a, a video called The Cauldron, which is part of my YouTube channel, it was shot with the Sci-Fi channel in uh, August of 2001, just a couple weeks before 9-11. So it was going to be to host my own cooking show and we started off with an aphrodisiac theme. So Aphrodite sat with me um, at this Malibu home, which was next to Dick Van Dyke's house that kept barking. Aphrodite we know is love. Aphrodite we know is desire. But she's not just that. She's also the goddess that represents loving yourself. And that's so important. So, you know, she sticks in my, she stays in my bathroom. Because that way when I'm getting ready, what I see is that goddess looking back at me saying, yes, you are beautiful, darling. Yes, you are. And then I have Nike. And she represents victory. Right? Well, victory represents different things to uh, all of us. There are different aspects of what victory can look like. This came from my daughter who got it, Alethea, my daughter Alethea, who brought it back from Greece. And that in and of itself, that your daughter would go across across the globe and bring back something so precious for me that I can sit at my writing desk and hope for victory, that hope for this entertainment value that I'm offering you is an opportunity to bring you in to the attainment that I have achieved by understanding these gods and goddesses. This is the at one man that we are experiencing together. The final god here is Hermes, also known as Mercury. And this is my son um, Skylar's god that he represented. He gave his games to when they did the pentathlon for the Waldorf school. And Hermes or Mercury represents communication. You see his wings represent flight. He's um, a god in, uh, to go with you for travel. He is somebody, um, yeah, they all have many different aspects, many different um, nuances that you might find more interesting and I find this one more interesting. But that is what it means to be a witch, that it is what it means to be Wiccan and pagan, that you get to choose for yourself how it resonates for you. My high priestess once said to me, you know, if you were without your wand or your bells or your feathers to remind you of those aspects of yourself, if you were on that deserted island with nothing but your intention, could you still do magic? And that's the point. 
That's the whole point. These gods and goddesses, they represent different aspects of the divinity that we want to bring out in ourselves. And that's why it's important to bring out one at a time to understand them, to work with them. I mentioned several gods and goddesses in my book, and I have an asterisk by those that represent the gods and goddesses that are from indigenous cultures that you might need to really spend about a good year with before you really understand, because some of these mysteries are quite sacred and maybe even complex. So start with something simple. Start with what you resonate with and enjoy the ride because that's what this is all about is about experiencing yourself as the divine let the divine live within you as you blessed be